Hello guys, welcome back to Axangel RC. Today I wanted to show you the CMK15 radio and give you a little demo of how it can be used in the field. I know this might seem a bit weird coming after the Uni RC7s, a new products videos, and the original plan was to have this out before the Uni RC7 arrived. But it arrived earlier than I thought, so I had to push this back. But I think it might actually turn out better this way, as you will get to compare what this radio can and cannot do compared to the Uni RC7. And same goes for the CFV app compared to the Uni GCS app. And I feel like a lot of you guys will find this video interesting and informative. If that is so, consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already and also consider supporting it by becoming a member and checking out the description below. Now, right from the get-go, I can tell you that, for the most part, the only notable differences between the MK15 and MK32 radius are the screen, which is slightly larger on the MK32, and the MK32 has a few more switches and larger battery, which is also removable, while the one on the MK15 is not. Well, at least not, unless you remove a few screws, then it also becomes removable. That pretty much exhausts the list of differences in terms of general functionality. They are effectively the same. Well, I think there were some differences in the specs of the Android devices they are built around, but that doesn't really change the experience or the use of the radios. The MK32 is a bit more convenient to use due to having more switches and being a bit larger, but the differences do not affect the use too much. Now, I have been getting some weird questions about whether the Uni RC7 is a radio for control, or if it is only video slash telemetry system, so let me clear that up. The Uni RC7, the MK32 and the MK15 are proper radio control systems, in addition to being able to move video and telemetry around. The only system that can work as purely video and telemetry system and does not have the built-in control sticks and buttons is the HM30, which can have an external receiver connected to it so it can forward the control signals up to the plane. With that out of the way, the general experience is the same as the Uni RC7. You turn on the radio the same way, and you start the FPV app the same way. What is different here is that the maps work without the need to update the Android firmware. I remember the FPV app before it had the map functionality, and I do remember that it worked out of the box when I installed the updated app, Though granted, it took a long while for that functionality to find its way to the app, while the UniGCS app had it from the get-go and it now works properly. Contrary to the working map, the CFV app does not have the option to switch link modes or any other settings. All of that is done through a separate app, the CTX app, and also it does not give you access to the parameters like the UniGCS app so you can't really use it on its own to do initial autopilot calibrations. The UniGCS app really does combine at least three apps that one would have to otherwise use to get the same work done on this radio. Now, that being said, I think there is a UniGCS app available for the MK15 and MK32 radios, so you might want to give that one a go as a more all-in-one solution. In this video, I used the CFV app and I have not yet tested the UniGCS app on this radio. One thing that you might notice, at least those of you who have used one of these C systems, is that the CFV app's OSD overlay is a lot bigger as a font size and easier to read compared to the UniGCS app. But that does make the screen a lot busier. It also shows a lot more useful information right on the main screen compared to the UniGCS, at least for now. Including the actual amount of data going up and down, not only the potential maximum that could pass through, and even this is still buried somewhere in the menu. However, they still haven't given the font an outline or a drop shadow, so whenever something is very bright on the screen, the overlay just melds into it and you can't see it very well. Getting the video from a camera to show on the screen is pretty much the same as on the UniGCS app. 
you go into the menu and select a camera or an RTSP address from the drop down menu. The difference here is that it doesn't show you a list of all available camera models to select from. And from here, things are pretty much the same as on the Uni RC7 system and the Uni GCS app. You can control the camera using the touchscreen, which is what I do for the most part, except for the zoom, which just like on the Uni RC7, I have on one of the rotary wheels on top of the radio, as this makes it more convenient to zoom while also moving the camera using the touchscreen. Of course, you can zoom and focus using the on-screen gimbal controls, but like I said, I find the zoom more convenient to be on the wheel, while the focus is generally on point in flight, so I don't really need to play with it much in a real use case scenario. And again, I'm actually pretty impressed and happy with the zoom and focus capabilities of the ZR10 gimbal, like I've said before in the dedicated video on the topic and I thoroughly enjoy playing around with it on the ground in situations like these, and the ZR30 is even more fun with its 30x optical zoom. In flight, to be honest, especially if you are far away from the subject of your observation, the whole thing is very relaxed, and you could easily use all the screen gimbal controls, including the zoom, to get this done, as you can see here in this segment. Since I had to hold my phone with one hand to film this, and the zoom wheel is on that side of the radio, I used only the screen controls to manage the gimbal. Also, having the plane in cruise or loiter or auto mode helps a lot since the autopilot actually does most of the work, keeping it in the air, while you get to have some fun with the gimbal. You've seen parts of this flight included in previous videos about the Uni RC7, where I've talked about the CFV app, but during those segments I had the plane loitering around the flying field and just had some fun with the gimbal, trying to follow other planes being flown down there. A situation like this is a very good opportunity to improve your skills with the gimbal, tracking things manually. That is, assuming you don't have the CAI module doing it for you. I would have to say though, that the Uni RC7 system is a lot more suitable and comfortable for use with gloves in colder environments due to the size and placement of the buttons and the questionably usable gimbal joystick, but it is there and can be used with gloves, so it has that over the MK series radios in any case. Generally, you would use the MK15 just as you would any other radio, sticks and buttons all around, the added benefit is the integrated HD and telemetry link on a pretty decent and relatively bright screen. Although again, the Uni RC7 system does all that much better, especially the display brightness. There is just no comparison. But generally, you can, for the most part, use the MK series radios in the same way, and gimbal control is pretty much the same. However, what the MK series radios cannot do is pretty much everything that I've focused on in my Uni RC7 video on its advanced functions, which includes telemetry over Bluetooth, telemetry and video over LAN cable, telemetry and video over Wi Fi hotspot. Also, there is no ability to connect the second telemetry stream to the air unit, so you only have the one, which for the most part should be plenty anyway. I think the telemetry sharing over Bluetooth might be possible on the MK radius, but it required some very dicey firmware update, which I refused to do because I wasn't willing to risk breaking the unit and having to send it back to China for factory reflashing, which is actually what happened when I flashed my HM30 system in order to be able to make use of the UDP functionality over a LAN cable. So I had to send that one back to China. Basically everything I've been bitching about to see over the past few years found its way to the Uni RC7 system and not a lot of it has been addressed on the HM30 and MK series radios. Also, it doesn't help that different functionalities only work on different firmware versions, some of which are very risky to flash and may result in breaking the unit. In one instance, in order to change some settings for the air unit from the MK15 radio, I had to downgrade some of the firmware to the earliest possible version, as those options were not working with later versions. The mismatch of versions and lack of unity 
that the system experiences when you try to do anything more advanced is really annoying. For the most part, most people might not have any issues with these systems since they do work, and they do work well. The problem becomes more apparent when you try to do anything out of the normal, when you try to get some advanced functionality working. This is when the frustration begins. Now, I realized that quite possibly, depending on the implementation of the UniGCS app on the MK series of radios, that might unify a lot of things, but you still have the issue with firmware mismatches within the radios, which an app update won't fix. What C should do, in my opinion, is try to come out with a final firmware where they basically make everything work, or as much as possible without the need to go up and down through the firmware versions in order to get one thing or another working. For instance, on the HM30 system, updating the FPV firmware so you can get video and telemetry on a laptop via the LAN cable makes the Wi-Fi behave like shit. Where with the normal one, you can connect to its Wi-Fi via a phone and use it for hours on end without issues. After the update, everything works perfectly over the cable, but now the Wi-Fi connection lags a lot, the video gets pixelated often, and the unit overheats reliably, leading to regular disconnects mid-flight, which as you can probably imagine is very far from ideal. Overall, the systems work, and the MK series radios and the HM30 system can still be useful, but they are the older generation. I do hope C will do them good and will address some of those issues with the firmware. But honestly, the Uni RC7 system is much superior in every way. Like I said, my whining has culminated in a brand new system instead of thoroughly fixing the old one. Is that ideal? Probably not for the many people who are already invested in the old system who have issues with it. But there could have been some hardware limitations to it, which prevent all these changes to be properly implemented. In any case, C have promised that they will not drop support for this quite yet, so I guess we will see what will happen. What I can tell you is that I will keep using my MK15 radio system and relatively soon it will be going into a new build since I want to have it on a flying plane so I can keep pushing and testing it. This will not be the end of the road for it. If you have enjoyed this video and found it useful, please do like, share and subscribe if you haven't already. A huge thanks to my members and Patreon supporters and in general to anyone who has and is supporting this channel. Fly safe and I will see you in the next one.